Today, I'd like to talk about what does God want? What does God want? This is an important thing. We serve God and, and we want to know what he wants. First of all, before anything else, God wants a relationship with you. He wants to spend eternity with you. He loves you. First uh, Timothy says, This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. God wants every one of us to be saved and to be in a relationship with him. And that's the first thing. You have to have that as the context. Next, we have Micah 6, 8. Know, O people, the Lord has told you what is good, and this is what he requires of you, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. The first one, doing what is right, we learn. We learn over time. We learn what is good and right and wonderful. The second one, love mercy. There's two big words, grace and mercy. Grace is getting something that you don't deserve, like an unexpected gift. Mercy is not getting something you do deserve. So mercy is when punishment that should be given is not given. And God wants us to love mercy. In other words, to love the thought of someone not receiving punishment that maybe they deserve. And finally, walk humbly with your God. Walking, knowing where that he is God, and we are not, not ordering him around, but walking alongside and, and walking humbly with him. Jesus, when he was asked what the two greatest commandments were, said that the first one was to love God with all of your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. Wow. To love God with all of that. For us to be able to have that relationship with God, to love him even as he loves us. And next is to love your neighbor as yourself. Those people around you, the people that you're with, your family, your neighbors, your friends, love them, even as you love yourself. In other words, think of them as important. Consider what they need and what they want. And love them even as you love yourself, even as you would consider what you want and consider what you need. Next, at the end of 1 Thessalonians, Paul is writing a letter, and I can see the scribe sitting next to him. I can see the guy going, okay, Paul, here we go. Oh, Paul, we're running out of parchment. We're running, you know, on this scroll. This is a long letter, you know, five chapters. And Paul says, okay, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it up. And so he starts hammering these things that are important. He starts going over these things that are important quickly. And in verses 16 through 18, he uh, gives us three big things to know. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The will of God is a way of saying what God wants. Let's look at those. Rejoice always. Always? Um, excuse me. There can be some hard times. There can be times we may not feel like rejoicing. In Nehemiah, Nehemiah tells the people, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is different than just temporary light happiness. The joy of the Lord is a choice. It is something that we can say, okay, I understand the role of God. I understand that he loves me. I understand that he has the power. I understand that he has the knowledge. Ah, that's cool. And I can rejoice, even in a bad circumstance. In Habakkuk, Habakkuk 
interesting book name, say that ten times quickly, uh, is an interesting passage starting at 317. Even though the fig trees have no blossoms and there is no grapes on the vine, even though the olive crop fails and the fields lie empty and barren, even though the flocks die in the fields and the cattle barns are empty. Wow, that's a bad time. That's like starvation time. That's time when you don't have what you need. Habakkuk 3.18 Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. 19. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes me as sure-footed as a deer, able to tread upon the heights. The joy of the Lord, we can choose to say, okay, I don't feel like it, but I'm going to choose to trust God and to put my trust in Him and rejoice in Him. I'm going to get that right perspective. Next, it says, pray without ceasing. Now, prayer is just talking with God. It's a conversation that goes both ways. And there's lots of different ways to pray. There's praying out loud. There's praying alone. There's praying with a group. And God promises a special thing when we pray with each other. But when we talk about without ceasing, that's a little hard. But we have to remember God hears our thoughts. And so it's kind of a matter of knowing that God is right here, that God is, is right here with us. He is not somewhere else. He's right alongside us all the time. We know that God is always with us. Knowing that God is always with us lets us just include him in what we are doing. Talk to him in our thoughts. Oh, Lord, thanks. That was awesome. Father, I'm struggling with this. Various quiet prayers, just instant little things, recognizing that God is with you, acknowledging his presence, knowing and understanding that presence of God, and walking in it. And finally, in everything give thanks. Again, everything? Yeah. All means all, and that's all it means. Uh, everything. Even things that we don't understand. I've had some circumstances in my life that I sure didn't understand at the time. Some of them, I look back now, and I can see what God is doing. That by taking me through that hard circumstance, he did a work in my heart. He taught me things that he couldn't teach me otherwise. He helped me to grow in ways that I wouldn't have grown otherwise. He helped a big, God has the big picture. God understands. And so in everything, we can trust God. We can understand that God loves us. He adores us. He cares for us. And understanding that helps us change everything about how we look at things. King David said that he was almost messed up. He almost looked at how the wicked were flourishing and he wasn't. And he almost slipped and fell. And then he came into the house of the Lord. He, he put himself in the place of God and recognized that in this place, in God's kingdom, where God rules, he is in control, and we can give thanks for everything, even things we don't like, even things we don't understand. We can give thanks in everything. Praise God. So I pray for the, this for you today that you indeed will be able to rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything, give thanks.